Hello. How's it going? Welcome to Making Simple MDM Complicated. Uh, probably should have put a slide in here that said this is not a sponsored Simple MDM slide deck. Um, this, this was not supported. Um, this was not uh, endorsed, if you will. Um, this was not um, approved in any way by Simple MDM. So um, let's see what we can do here. All right. So this is the working subtitle for this. Um, I had a few different subtitles as we kind of went along with different things. And I, I kind of liked this one. Um, I, 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 had, I had a hard time really like isolating this down. I, I, I feel weird at, at a very open source community driven event talking about a single vendor um, as much as I may or may not love that vendor. Um, I just wanted to kind of expand this out to like maybe some like more considerations and systematically managing your devices uh, via an MDM vendor with a working API. So there's a lot there and we'll chew on that. But before we get started, my name is Lucas. Um, I'm on Twitter, Lucas J Hall underscore. And then I'm on the Mac admin Slack as Lucas. And then, yeah, let's get started. So while I'm gonna be talking in the context of simple MDM, I'm just gonna say like simple MDM just isn't any MDM, but it, it can be any MDM. And I think <laughs> my point of that is to say like, any of the ideas that I talk about in some of these things could be extended generally to any other MDM um, as it's just kind of a feature set. So it, it may already exist, it may not, um, it may exist under a different name. Um, and yeah, you can kind of take that, take that back to your MDM and see if maybe some of this applies. Um, contextually, uh, no monkey here. Um, Simple MDM does uh, have some support for monkey integrations. I won't be talking about that. Uh, this is just going to be MDM specific first. Um, and then the Simple MDM features uh, that come along with those MDM to support it will kind of be what I talk about, but no like additional package management or anything um, really mentioned here. Um, contextually, cloud. Um, a lot of the things that I will reference will be based off of past experience that I've had and tools that I've used. Um, so a lot of it will be AWS type tooling references. Um, you again can translate that to your GCP equivalencies or whatever um, you may have. Um, so we're gonna start out with a few bad assumptions. Um, you're using an MDM for MDM. Uh, <laughs> and when I, say, when I say that, I mean like if you're using just the MDM spec, um, not package delivery, um, no agents, you know, nothing like that. Um, your MDM vendor, or if you're running an internal MDM such as Micro, um, you know, has a it has a a robust it has a it has any API really <laughs> anything for you to work with. Um, if you have a a cloud, just okay, any environment with access to perform you know basic logic um, via scripted actions or services or receive these payloads, um, you know. This kind of acts under the assumption one of the one of the points that I get into that you have the ability to like receive a post uh, payload from Simple MDM, um, and we'll get more into that here in a bit. So the TLDR of what we're going to get into is we're going to talk about MDM slash enrollments is how uh, Simple words it um, overrides and attribute precedents and how that can help um, in a fleet in a fleet management scenario. And then um, how to API use and abuse, like how, how to really utilize an API um, on your MDM to do, um, to bridge your actual logic um, and reduce manual lift. Um, so all the enrollments. So let's talk about enrollments. So enrollments is how um, Simple MDM links to uh, DEP. And I'm gonna have an illustration of that. We're gonna talk about that pipeline. And then we're gonna look at an example of how to do systematic enrollment based off the platform. So cool. This is all pretty, pretty um, general knowledge, but you know, like in an, in an enterprise environment, um, purchased from resellers, and those resellers will almost always, um, never will they not, in a perfect world, get that information into um, Apple Business Manager and Apple School Manager. Um, and that's awesome. So that's like those machines exist within ABM. And ASM, so that's all. That's great. 
right? Like we've got our macOS devices, our iPad devices, um, our iOS devices, and that's awesome. So then from there, you know, we can ship it on off to our MDM. So if you look at Apple's documentation on this, um, you can see there's different ways to do default assignments, right? You can, based off of platform type, um, platform family, you can assign them to a specific MDM server as it's um, worded in this documentation. Um, MDM server in the world of ABM is the equivalency of how uh, simple MDM views enrollments. So those are kind of synonymous as we look through these examples. So from there, then you can kind of break it out even more, right? So we have different enrollments or MDMs based off of platform type. And this may be literal, literally different MDMs for you. Uh, you may use one, MD, you know, you may have your Intune over here for um, mobile devices, and then you may have, I don't know, simple for Macs only, and then something else. I don't know, you know, who knows? Um, your mileage may vary. Who knows why you set up the way you do, but it could look something like this. So um, simple M calls the calls has a thing called enrollment, which is a, effectively an, an MDM endpoint for ABM to link into. Uh, and you have the ability to uh, set up and configure um, as many of these enrollments as you want. Um, there may be a hard technical limit there. I, I, I can't attest to that. But what this allows you to do is say, let's expand it out. Like let's have a testing enrollment. Let's have a CI CD enrollment. Uh, maybe something for Zoom devices, maybe some for Zoom uh, iOS devices or iPad devices or whatever. Um, at the ABM ASM level, I think like you only have the single path of like what ABM can assign devices to, um, but you also have the ability to have a lot more of these enrollments. Um, and I think this is something that's kind of underutilized a lot um, for testing and things because you can you could literally test the entire DEP workflow um, from device assignment to boot all the way through by kind of redirecting it manually from ABM into like a testing workflow. Or if you have a, a bunch of CI CD machines, you can kind of redirect them into that manually from ABM. And I think that's something that's pretty, uh, underutilized. Um, and it's just kind of a, a pro tip, um, where I'm going to go with this is uh, a little bit later is something more like, let's just send everything to a single enrollment and then do our business logic from there um, because that will lend to a lot um, more automated experience. Um, you could probably keep them separate, but for sake of illustration, we'll go this way. Um, from the MDM, we take that information and we pass it to whatever our brain is, um, whatever is processing our business logic, right? And then from there, we can then start to do assignments, group assignments, excuse me, um, to get the devices where they need to go, where they're meant to go. And we're gonna pick apart uh, that brain uh, and how that could look a little bit later. So one of the, uh, another one of the really underutilized um, features of Simple MDM um, that I think um, a lot of people uh, should take more advantage of if, if they can, um, both systematically and manually is the ability to have um, attribute overrides, um, define specific attributes and have them overwritten at different levels. Um, so this is, a, this is a simple MDM specific example, but it could be something that exists within another MDM, like the ability to have an attribute layer, um, based off of a group assignment or something like that. And I'll illustrate this here a little bit further. Um, so hopefully you can logically kind of extend this illustration to, um, your MDM and it makes a little sense. Um, so like out of, out of the box, simple MDM includes like name, model, phone number, serial number. And these are, these are just kind of attributes about the device, right? So device enrolls, it gets these things. Um, they can be changed or not changed depending on the value. Um, and these things for the device can be referenced um, within different payloads or configurations. So a lock screen example is like, you could say like asset name is device name and serial number is serial number. And then those attributes will, you know, be populated with their actual values. Um, on the device. And that's really handy because it's a nice way to kind of template out uh, some of these uh, devices. Um, really what custom, att custom attributes in simple are, is just a, a basic key value relationship. Um, and those can be defined within simple. And that's really cool. Um, so actually within the UI, you can just go to um, configs attributes and then start setting them out. Um, this is kind of where I like, I like to see this graphically, um, just like helps me visualize what this is going to look like. Um, so when you set those in simple, you kind of have this default level of attributes. Um, for there, it gets assigned by group. Um, 
And then from there you have device. So at each layer in simple MDM, you can override each of these, um, each of these values, or sorry, you can set each of these values. So the device level being the highest um, uh, precedence and the default being lowest. So the way this looks is, say we have screensaver settings, right? Five, 10, 15, um, whatever. I mean, this is arbitrary. It's just an illustration. So we have some devices, we have some groups and we have default. So here's the values. So we have a five minute value for this device. So that device is gonna have a five minute screensaver. Um, that group has a 10 minute default. So the device that has null value for this will have 10 minutes. And this device or these devices that live outside this group gonna be 15 minutes because there's no values. So attributes, um, really slick, like really great um, thing to use that I feel like you can kind of take the screensaver example and extend that to lots of different attributes um, that you may need to configure. And this is nice too, because these values can actually be used in profiles and profile custom profile configurations and within um, the payload, the management payloads within simple. Um, so yeah, here's a fake uh, uh, profile key list um, with some variables in there. So, you know, ask for password, um, ask for password delay. So these are all values that are variabled out effectively with these attributes. And these can be overridden at, you know, whichever layer you see fit. So if you have a group of something that needs, you know, like, more stringent security layers, like then you can just kind of override that value for the group. Or if someone's gonna give a presentation and they don't want a screensaver or whatever, you could override it for that single device. So pretty neat. But again, if you think for a moment about MDM provisioning in profiles and all of the things we control with profiles, uh, the ability to like start to have attributes at these different layers within our um, management is really nice. and. Uh, allows a lot of flexibility. Um, excuse me. You know, some MDMs may not do this. Like some MDMs may have to regenerate a profile per device um, every time you want to change attributes. Like, I don't know. It's something to, it's something to work, uh, look into, uh, see if your MDM supports a feature like this or an equivalency, right? Like um, maybe it's done more horizontally with groups or something, but super neat. API use and abuse. Um, you know, like what is supported? Um, API libraries, webhooks. This is going to be, um, we're going to do a couple of different examples within this. Um, you know, I think there's a very clear, um, or maybe not clear, maybe more, more blurry line between like where we have an MDM solution that is manually maintained and used from the GUI. And then there's like kind of that, that jump to get to the place of where. Um, you know, admins feel comfortable using an API and systematically using an API. Um, and I think that that's no small jump. Like, I don't want to discount that by any means. Um, but it's very powerful once um, you start to dip your toes into um, that type of thing. Um, and I'll kind of, we'll kind of see some benefits from that as we go through this. So RIP, um, I'm just going to use this as an example of why this is something that's helpful. Um, so, you know, with um, profiles not being able to install um, this profiles <laughs> from the command line, um, a lot of config management tooling lost that ability as well, because that was basically what was called out to. Um, so moving to an MDM to be reliant on this, you know, that's a pretty heavy lift, uh, the larger fleet you have. Um, so, you know, attributes are great. Like attributes are awesome. It allows you the ability to be flexible about your groups and your devices um, and your default values. But, um, you know, like then we start to look at the API and we can start to be a little bit more, more um, granular with our control, setting attributes and things like that. Um, I kind of want to start out with like what's supported. Um, so I'm talking about an API and I'm talking about uh, simple MDM in specific, um, but I kind of want to go a little bit, a little bit deeper, right? Like, so what is an MDM? Like, what, what does that, like, what's that mean? Um, and this is my favorite, my favorite uh, question to troll with um, on the Mac admin Slack is, um, 
there's always the question that's like, what's your MDM or like what MDM would you choose? And I never think it's a fair, a really fair question uh, because what the MDM is, is what the MDM spec can do. So <laughs> to me, anything uh, above what the MDM specification is from Apple is fluff. Um, I'm not saying it's not fantastic to have like better GUIs and more systematic um, administration and logging and all of this stuff. Yeah, like it's great. Don't get me wrong. But like I kind of come back to thinking about um, what is it really like and what does it need to do and then what can be done above that on another layer, um, whether it's an agent that's also deployed by the vendor that's also giving you MDM control over the device or something. Um, because of the inherent you know, way MDM works on a device, it's not something that's tied to an agent. It could be like an agent could call out to an MDM that invokes changes, um, which we all know some changes that are happening with that, um, that I'll just touch on a bit later. But um, yeah, like, I try to use MDM as like a, as like a more of a, like truly just doing MDM things, like just deploying profiles, initial install packages, things like that, like not, you know, VP, VPP or whatever it may be. So I sent someone a joke on the Mac admin Slack and I was like kind of talking and bantering about this talk. And I was like, it's kind of like, uh, I APNS, therefore I am. And that joke didn't really uh, land well because they just responded with not now. Okay, all right. I can't hear anyone laugh, so I don't even know if that like landed or not. So we'll just move on. Um, <laughs> so what's supported, right? So like if you start with the MDM spec, then the MDM can only do the MDM things. Um, how much of your vendor, like what is your vendor um, supporting in that, right? Like, what are they, what are they, are they doing everything? Like they're doing everything in the MDM spec, are they not? Um, you know, what's that look like? So in simple, they have API documentation publicly available. You can go check it out and all of the things it can do. Um, really great, uh, good documentation. Um, got a couple of feedbacks on other different ways it could be formatted. Um, I'll take that up with Taylor later, but anyways, moving on. Um, there's also the ability to use API libraries. Um, so there's um, something that was uh, written by a community, community member named Steve um, called Simple MDM Pi that's been moved over to the Mac admins um, for hopefully some continued maintenance on that. Um, and that's really nice because it like simplifies the lift, right? We're not rewriting API calls all the time and doing this kind of stuff. Um, and it'll allow you to handle pagination and things like that. Um, so, you know, something that could take a whole block of code every time becomes something as simple as this. So like you know, put your API key in. Um, if, you, if you're tracking your logs and you know your last log ID, it'd be something as simple as this to just like, hey, go get me this object full of logs and then you can iterate through your logs. And then from there you do whatever, you can chip it off to your, you know, your Elk stack or your Splunk or your S3 bucket or whatever it is you wanna do. So um, finding API libraries um, is very helpful, right? Like they may exist for Jamf, they may exist for AirWatch, they may, you know, like these are great tools to help bridge that gap in um, starting to interact with the API. Um, simple MDM webhooks, whoa, uh, this is great. Like these are, this is like one of those things that I'm like, is everyone doing this? Everyone should be doing this. If for nothing else other than just like a cool way to do some real time um, logging and information about it. So you can go into your simple MDM settings and you're under the API settings, I think is you can enable these webhooks. So the downside is you need some place to send this. You need some receiver of it. It could be, um, you know, like a, AWS API, API gateway to a Lambda function that then gets processed and so on and so forth. Um, more about what it does though, is when things happen within the simple MDM environment, you get these real time webhooks about what's going on. So like a device enroll, a device unenrolled or a device changed groups, like pretty basic ideas conceptually, but like really powerful. Um, as you kind of go through the process. So like getting the fact that the device enrolled at all and what group it is, like this is all like really, really good information. Like it enrolled, when did it enroll? Sweet, like this is um, the ID of the device. So this is specific to simple, like this is the, how you would identify the device within the simple MDM, also the UDID. Um, serial number, also good to have. Um, 
and then the device group. So if you know, if you can look up against your device groups, you know what group it enrolled into. Um, and that's like, that's really great information to have. And you can start to build out a lot of logic off of these events in real time. Um, so a good example of that is like, how do we then systematically assign items to groups? So what do we know? Like we know the device serial number. Um, we know the device's ID within the MDM. So we know the groups. We know like what group it's in based off its ID. So you can kind of treat the serial number as kind of the primary key um, as identifying the device. However, it's really the, in, for simple MDM, it's the device ID that's used to manipulate the device within simple. And then, you know, you can look at where it currently is and then ergo get the current configuration of the device based off its group, which is all really great information. So looking at a systematic group assignment kind of thing could look something like this. A device enrolls, it hits your endpoint, it's processed. Your endpoint could then say, hey, serial number rolled in, enrolled. I'm gonna go look out at my assets database and say, where's that, where's that device assigned? Uh -oh. Oh, oh, Siri makes an appearance. Um, Siri does not know where that device is assigned. Um, where's that device assigned? Okay, sweet. So it's in advertising. All right, cool. Well, then we're going to go ahead and just reassign that device to the advertising group in simple so it gets those things. So there's an example of um, a, a group reassignment using the simple MDM um, Pi library. So now you can kind of go back to that original, one of those first slides of like a single endpoint to receive all of your devices. But using these hooks, you can now start to process these devices as they enroll and get them more dynamically to the places that they need to be, all without ever actually touching the device record. Um, and then from there, um, you could even do something along the lines of like attribute overrides. Like maybe there's a preference set that like anybody in advertising, you know, gets a certain 10 minute thing, uh, 10 minute value, but you want to like override things. So you could even pull these attribute values from some other third party database, whether it's an asset database or, you know, just key values assigned to a device in some other system. And you could allow um, operational um, folks to have access to that, to update this more dynamically. I mean, this, this is extended even to device names. So, you know, whatever the device name is in the asset management system could be enforced and simple um, via a similar process than this. Um, so let's take a step back and look at this nice, um, clean and simple uh, <laughs> workflow that we got here. So the device enrolls in an MDM, sweet. Uh, it hits our little middleware functions and then it enrolled, awesome. So who's it assigned to? Okay, sweet, so this device is assigned, we're gonna look at the asset database. Okay, so this device is assigned to so-and-so, okay, so-and-so's in this department, okay, so that department gets these policies, okay, okay, cool, so this device is enrolled, so we're also going to send a Slack message, um, and then, well, SimpleMDM also supports unenroll, group change, and unknown event types, um, so un unenroll, uh, well, okay, what if this device unrolls? What happens? Like, should we update the assets? So you can kind of see like this can start to get pretty convoluted um, if you don't approach it with a very um, kind of uh, goal-driven type of direction. So um, to clarify here, unknown event, there is no actual unknown event type. I just use unknown event as an event that doesn't meet any of the known events within simple. Um, I started to plan out stuff like this internally and I got, <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of felt like I was r rambling about this, like um, event driven so-and-so da, 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 da. But anyways, if you take a look at it and you kind of, you really kind of simplify it down, you just have truly an event driven um, an event that drives something like, is it a task that runs and collects information? Is it something that's coming from simple? Is it something that's coming from your IDP? Is it a hook that's initiated by someone in Slack? That event can be evaluated by your middleware. Um, and then any action from there can kind of take place. So really it kind of comes down to something a little bit more fluid because you're really only having so many origin points. Um, those origin points are creating events that are being evaluated in individual functions. And then actions are taken from those functions. And when you start breaking it down to these smaller events and how these events are processed, it, it kind of becomes a little bit more simpler and less, appears a lot less convoluted um, as far as it goes. Um, so TLDR, um, 
use the API. Um, if your MDM has an API and has support for API, um, it's a great it's a great way uh, to start. Um, allowing you to do that, you could use if if your MDM allows multiple MDM servers like enrollments like simple mdm does that's a great way to get a testing environment going a great way to do the whole process from like a to z and kind of keep it completely separate um, from a production workflow and automate like a an automated enrollment process workflow um, and you just have to like i don't know i always say ponder and think about what is like what is mdm and like what does that mean to you uh, i was really really lucky to maybe it wasn't really lucky. I was really, really lucky to be in a position to choose a new MDM um, for one of my employers. And this is something that I thought about a lot of like, what tools do we have to do the things that we need to do? Like doing at, at the core, what are we reliant on this um, service for? And does it do that well? And then from there, what can we do? Um, that's a benefit. I understand that a whole lot of people don't actually have, um, whether it's internal like constraints to their environments or internal political things. Like I get that, but at, at, if you're ever like presented with that, it's something good to think about. Um, what do I really need to use this for? And then what can I also use it for? Um, that type of thing. Um, and I think personally that like complexity and increments is okay. Um, like, um, I made the illustration of these different workflows and I don't think that's somewhere you need to start from day one. I think you can plan for your end state and like what an awesome workflow, uh, set of workflows or event driven type of situations you could use. Um, but it's all incremental and it's all, um, you know, a little bit at a time. I think using like, if you, the, the AWS example is like AWS, um, gateway and Lambda, like they're they're all versionable, um, they're all iterable, like you can kind of progress as things go using different enrollments and types within Simple, for example. You can, you can iterate on these things and develop these things kind of aside from production, there's no need um, to be relying on it. And then it's also really easy to track the changes in code and get, that, get those changes um, you know, pushed to production um, with a high level of confidence that it's gonna, it's gonna do what you need to do. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't, um, talk about WWDC this week and some of the changes coming um, from uh, coming to the MDM spec. Um, as a system administrator, this is, this is something that like I feel like we're aware of and we want to we want to pester or we should be aware of and we want to pester our vendors about um, these changes and how it's going. I've seen a lot of people um, punching a lot of holes in it in different ways, which is awesome. Like that's exactly what we should be doing um, and getting that getting that feedback to the folks that need to hear it. Um, I also think we need to take it with um, a little bit of hope, a little bit of ray of hope of um, the direction that MDM's headed. Um, I know that you know, it's iOS only and there are different things like that, but I think it speaks volumes on the direction um, that the, the platform's headed. And um, that should at least give us some hope that some of these changes are coming to Mac OS down the road um, as usually like the feature, feature uh, releases flow um, as far as MDM is concerned. So um, yeah, I think uh, the only thing I'm gonna say on this is that I left it with, I left a lot of the, uh, announcements around um, software update and and uh, the declarative management um, feeling good, um, at least hopeful, um, knowing that um, down the road, you know, some of these things like hopefully come to fruition for Mac OS. Um, I, and, and again, I, I've already started putting feature requests in much to uh, Taylor's chagrin at Simple MDM um, to get some of this stuff started and start the process thinking, which I'm sure they already are. There's some, they've got some great blog posts and things out there. So uh, I've got some resource linked here. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, you can't click on it. Um, this will be all in the GitHub repo um, on the channel, in the, in the Discord channel. Um, and you can pull that down and get all of that. Um, I'll probably update and push another version with some of the, the new MDM declarative management session links and things um, once I get to that. So yeah, thanks for listening to me ramble um, about making simple MDM complicated. So that's what I got.